Hello, welcome to the Fantasy Fair. The what is it? Oh, that is right. The most magical podcast on earth. Now, as you could tell, you are part of the Princess and the Frog audio commentary. So get whatever device you're going to go watch the movie on and press play along with my co-hosts now. Okay, welcome to the Princess and the Frog audio commentary. Joining me is Alexis Soto. How are you, Alexis? I'm so excited to be here. Okay, you? and then we also have Peter Martinez. How are you, Peter? I'm okay. He's alive, everyone. He's alive. Okay, then we have <laughs> also the Morenos. How are you guys? We're good. Yeah, we're good. You good? <laughs> okay. Good. Everybody see Mickey? Yep. Yes. Yep. Barely. Okay. Or uh, barely. Okay. Um so yeah. Why are we doing Princess of the Frog, guys? I don't know. You don't know? We're just doing it for shits and giggles? Okay. Isn't that why you do anything? <laughs> for shits and giggles? Yeah. Uh, well, we're not chaotic like you, um, Peter. One can't hardly be chaotic as you peter so i am not chaotic i'm very organized uh, okay i like this movie guys i don't know about you guys i i really enjoy this movie we'll see throughout the whole thing let's see who um who bites each other's heads off first <laughs> you guys would know I how feel... i felt about the film if you read my disney tier list <laughs> or better yet we had an actual show on the fantasy fair a few months back where we talked we rank the disney princess movies right and i believe and it all was of a us, peter's number one well that was like yeah we did that what five years ago yeah at this point <laughs> if i'm not mistaken we all ranked that movie very very high yeah i think it was my third it was my number three i think yeah it was yeah, my number i think three. so I never ranked the movies, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I put like number one. Mm. Uh, I do, and it better be The Little Mermaid. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Everybody ditches the fish. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> false. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, clearly we wanted to, to do it now because of the recent news, right? With There's Splash Mountain. News of, oh, I think yeah, you're going to talk Splash about Mountain. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> well, they do. Oh, yeah. You're talking about recent news. I don't know well, how... Not... I don't know if it was because of that or because of Splash Mountain. I don't remember. Because they... we've been planning this for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Like, this has been a long time in the making, but... We're we're doing it, um. Yeah, I miss two D animation. This is like everything looks gorgeous. Yeah, this might be their most well done two D animation. I think. Just at how well it looks. Mm hmm. And it's not like this, like crazy magical places and so like it's it's well, New Orleans is magical. But it, it like it's uh -huh. just New Orleans, but the, the way just like that freaking hallway, how detailed yeah. it is, like it's yeah, they really went it looks out like of a their painting. way. Yeah, yeah, like it definitely takes like influences from the other Disney movies. Like I I see a lot of Lady and the Tramp in this movie, um, and just like how like it's painted the backgrounds we don't are. Use the tramp word, okay? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So what, am I canceled? You've been canceled. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that soup looks good. It's not soup. Soup? It's gumbo. Stu the gumbo! <laughs> the gumbo! The shrimp and the gumbo. That's, yeah. Gets offended. <laughs> it's a stew. I love this gumbo part. Gumbo is a stew. <laughs> yeah, like, the movie... <laughs> is in a lot of ways but as far as how it's animated it feels 
like this very well could have been released immediately after Lion King, mm -hmm. uh, Mulan. It, it's in so many ways, but even how it looks like it is most reminiscent of that era and yet simultaneously the best looking one of course it's not yeah. fair because this is 2009 yeah. right you know and yeah. yeah and animations you know technology and all that shit i mean it's like why mary poppins at the time was very groundbreaking in terms of what it did because it was you know all the technology wrapped up in one you know but here we have this movie honestly i wish that they could go back to this format you know and i wish that the um the market wasn't so cg heavy and um more put on the for forefront because i would love to see a disney classically animated movie like this again remember when they used to do like different styles of animation film to film <laughs> yeah like if you look at like treasure planet or, or you know or atlantis mm -hmm. and this movie you disney could see <laughs> you could I, I, see don't, I don't wish that they would go completely back to this but i wish that they wouldn't um no um that they didn't just stop like completely just cut it off you know what i mean yeah like i wish they would have slowly like transitioned into 3d um and well, they incorporated tangled both. was their slow transition i guess i don't know <laughs> that's like completely CG, i don't know though. yeah i don't know any of their cg films that would have looked um that would not have looked better in 2d because i've seen a lot of the um what do you call it like behind the scenes uh artwork mm -hmm. um early animation and, and stuff like that for like tangled and for frozen and for, i'm well, like oh my artwork, god it looks um, amazing and then it's yeah. like oh typical cg looking thing like they're they're not obviously not yeah. ugly movies um but it's just the animate there's something about the animation it just looks so much better <laughs> well like uh, I think tangled uh tangled the series is heavily influenced on the artwork it's basically the artwork like if you see in the credits um it's basically that <laughs> kyle said it wasn't canon so i never watched it well kyle <laughs> doesn't count so no oh, shit! <laughs> yeah, everyone's been saying that since. You know. I think the problem though with CG, and some people have been saying that with um, Good Dinosaur and Frozen Two, it, and onward actually, that the the environment that the characters are on are way too realistic, while the characters themselves are still looking kind of cartoonish and like. I think that's it's, the most interesting part of it, though. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, but like, yeah. that's something that kind of takes it out. People that people kind of get taken out of when watching those kinds of yeah okay. them off just a your question what what about movies like wreck it ralph or zootopia do you feel that those would have been far better in 2d um wreck it ralph i think those are not. Do mm -hmm. and zootopia i think it'd be pretty even because i don't think visually it's v visuals are not really the point with zootopia mm-hmm yeah, it's more like the message that they're trying to put across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The world's cool, but I don't know. It's not like, oh my god, visually. I think it would have done equally as good, you know, in uh, in 2D. Like, the same thing with Tangled, you know. Uh, Tangled originally started off con conceptually as a 2D animated film, but because this movie um, didn't do good at the box office in terms of Disney standards, um, uh, they went like, hey, we got to do CG because... CG is the name of the game right now. Also, like, the cool thing, uh, another thing to note, like, I love, like, the way that uh, Dr. Facilier is. Uh, I like how his shadow is also another character of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just the the cool quirks that his shadow does. I think that's really cool yeah. and really, m you know, menacing. We need to bring back the uh, Disney villain to the forefront, too. The prince, oh, my God. Uh, also yeah, we need that. Has character. Uh, what's his name? Prince Al Aldean? Naveen? Prince Naveen. 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 He has a real himbo energy. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we sorely needed that comment. Thank you for that, Peter. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Always bringing the himbo commentary here on the... Always. Uh, 
always. If you didn't want it, why am I here? <laughs> this is an interesting <laughs> question, and Kyle kind of queued it up there when he said that the movie was a financial disappointment when it was released 2009. Anyone want Disney standards, right? But I mean, in general, it was it was a modest success. Do you go, who who wants to take a gander as to why <laughs> it Marketing. was? Actually, I just recently, I don't know if it was true, but the movie came out the same time as Deathly Hollows Part 2, and part I can't two? remember the other one. I don't think so, bro. Or maybe Part 1? Uh, no. No, Part oh. 1 was 2010, and then Part 2 was 2011. Okay, because I saw like a meme about it, and I was like, that can't be true, so I just kind of no, wanted it, it confirmed by you guys. Yeah. came out the same year as Tangled, and I mean, Tangled did pretty well. <laughs> you know what the issue is? It, it it came out too soon. It came out before the whole freaking nostalgia. Revival era? Yeah, where everyone's like, my childhood, I'm a 90s kid. You know, like that huge nostalgia rush. It came out right, yeah. right before that. Um, so it wasn't able to, so you think to that ride they- that. But now where everyone's all like, crazy about representation crazy about nostalgia and shit like that oof it would have made so much it would have made a billion i i really think mm-hmm. so so it was ahead of its time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah, like too ahead of its time no, ahead of its time has, and far it, behind it has, i mean there's a lot of reasons why it wasn't as good in disney standards but i definitely think that also like marketing i do not remember a single tra- single trailer for this movie <laughs> at all <laughs> mm-hmm. i, I didn't remember watch the this first movie. one i pff, honestly i don't remember anything i didn't even know this movie had come out until tangled <laughs> <laughs> really yeah and I you didn't were know a disney a fan holy yes. shit well she didn't even see tangled in theaters she told me i didn't we when we were doing the commentary a few weeks back. Oh, my God. You know, it's interesting um, to talk about this era. Can anyone remember the Disney animated feature that came out immediately before this one? Was it Bolt? Yeah, I think Maybe. it was Bolt. I don't know Bolt was one of them. It was a transitional Chicken phase. Metal? It was... The Robinsons. <laughs> It was just a bad decade for Disney animation, and th- this yeah. is where Pixar is getting its peak. Up came out this year, I think. Yeah, a funny. Uh, yeah, um, and what happened Up came was out this year? in order to save the Disney animation, they just took a shit ton of people in <laughs> Pixar and then just moved them over to, to Disney animation. Yeah, yeah and. Which You're definitely saying, helped Disney Animation, but kind of fucked so, over Pixar. I thought this was t- 2007, not 2009. 2009. No, it was 2009. This one came out. Th- this this came out the same year as Fantastic Mr. Fox, Coraline, Up. Yeah, the other animated movies that came out that year. Okay, I thought this was 2007. Mm-mm. That was Ratatouille. And there was no... I mean, I think Bolt and Meet the Robinsons were the ones that came before this one. I feel that that those were the they were, side. and those are better received I, than Chicken Little and uh, what's it called, Home on the Range, which were just like bottom of the yeah. barrel. <laughs> I don't think Home on the Range. range. God, Home on the Range. Oh I don't even remember that. <laughs> Chicken Little. I really. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like Meet the Robinsons. I love oh, yeah. Meet the Robinsons. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's not. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Mathieu. I never saw it. Okay, At that you, point, if you <gasps> guys wait, you've never trailer, seen Meet the Robinsons. Well, let me tell you. Look, at that point, you I had what? left. <sighs> None of you have the right. All of you are fake Disney fans. Okay, all every single one of you, <laughs> At including this point, you. Literally, my family had stopped watching Disney animated movies. We were basically just Pixar people at that point because. We had no interest in any of the projects. And like the last in that decade, the last animated Some Disney movie I saw in theaters. Way. I love this song. I'm crazy. I can't remember if I I even saw any of them in theaters. We saw all the Pixar That's... movies, but not, none of the Disney animated <sighs> animation films. I can't. Let's talk about this song. Fans. This song is a freaking bop. It is. <laughs> it's pretty good. I like the change. I like of the Nani Rose is amazing, too. 
Also, this uh, this song, like this is uh, this is written by Randy Newman, and this is like one of the most least Randy Newman sounding songs. <laughs> He's not singing it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what it would sound like if he was singing it. Uh, in general, like, uh, this may be Randy Newman's most underrated score. People just go straight to Toy Story, but, like, this is a pretty sensational this soundtrack. This is honestly my favorite of his. It might be. Like, all the songs, I think, are fire. Like, they're great. All of them. And, of course, this, I think the score speaks for itself. Oh, yeah. Also, the art style in this uh, this sequence is phenomenal too. Yeah, can I just like also add? I mean, I mentioned how the gumbo looked really good before, but the food animated in this movie just looks great as well. It's and hard to is... animate. Go ahead. Yeah, and it's hard to animate food too. So yeah. I think that this is a that's another added bonus. I'm sure it had the benefit I mean, of this being post Ratatouille. Hands yeah. are also really hard to draw. Have you guys ever tried drawing hands? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sucks ass. I always mess up and put four fingers. <laughs> oh my. Oh my God. I literally missed I just listened to the last part of that conversation. What? <laughs> <laughs> All you heard was four fingers? <laughs> yeah okay which so. four fingers do you always draw oh, no. the middle ones see, you, oh. and, and which ones do you miss <laughs> i think like okay the ring finger because i remember the ring the finger, the so. and there's the middle finger so and then you the just pointer, draw simpson's hands <laughs> and then the thumb yeah did this movie come out during thanksgiving time i mean it's gotta right i don't fucking know you look it up I'm just trying to find out, like, what what were all the factors that, you know, caused this movie to... Probably just at the time, it wasn't, like, it, interesting to people. It came out in December. Mm. So what was... Where's Prince Nadine from? Naveen! Naveen. Where's he from? Moldova. So it's they just some fake-ass yeah. Europe. Yes. <laughs> Europe. <laughs> <laughs> like uh fuck, is that the same place uh what's her name is from moldovia G- oh, <laughs> genovia, genovia. genovia. <laughs> <laughs> i think moldovia is real that no, would have been something if they just gave up and said you know what let's just tie in the princess diaries for no fucking reason let's just genovia. you know name He's drop a long genovia. lost prince from genovia Gen- they could have we have it. genovia we have agrabah we have uh, uh, Andalasia from uh, Enchanted. I'm trying to think of Corona. Liberia. Corona, Pretend. the land of Corona. <laughs> wow, that's the earth. Okay. Peter, I know you absolutely detest remakes and all that oh, shit. No remakes, but, no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If they don't cast Dovey Diggs as uh, Dr. Facilier, I am writing. <laughs> I think he would kill as Dr. Do you want to have another remake remedy show? No. <laughs> then shut your bitch ass. At least, at least not with you. Oh. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> oh, God. This is the best song. You struck me. This shit is so good. I just noticed he has purple eyes. Don't wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. Also, Dr. Also Facilier a- at the parks is amazing. Mm-hmm. Great character interaction. I w- w- my last interaction with him, he was uh, talking to this little little kid and warning him that Tiana was in the French market restaurant or something and to stay away from her. <laughs> with me, he was shooing away a little kid. <laughs> also, like, how well... I mean, wait, I you know... We stroke the ego of the animation enough on this, but like this whole sequence with the the shadow, it's, nice it's really f- cool. Yeah, it's nice and funky, and also like if you look closely at the at the shadow at the wallpaper, it turns into skull and crossbones. Like that's fucking paying attention to detail. If there ever was one, right there. 
He, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but he kind of reminds me of Rasputin from Anastasia. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Once Played fabulously upon by the Christopher Lloyd. Mm-hmm. I mostly just like this, just the way he convinces that one guy to join him. I don't know oh, the yeah. name. That's, <laughs> what, that's the thing. I like when um storytelling is actually incorporated into the music. <laughs> it's not which just... <laughs> was shepherded in many ways by Mr. Howard Ashman. You can catch now on Disney Plus streaming. It's a hell of a documentary. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, that's I think all of us are in complete agreement that that's kind of the best kind of use for this medium, which is a musical. You use the songs to push forward the narrative, which ironically enough, think back to the early 90s or the late 80s. That seemed like such a revolutionary idea, but it makes so much sense. Yeah, like it's like a, it's a part of the story, and it makes it more I I like seamless mm-hmm. when they transition from uh from dialogue to uh to song. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that they were far away from kind of figuring that out when Howard Ashman joined, but the only thing that they were using it for was mainly, uh, I mean, kind of sort of character development, but just like very but that's the point right minor. it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> utilized uh the best way it could be yeah yeah like it was more of like the the staple that they got really you know right back then was the want song and like you know i, I love the this drop yeah dream is a wish you're the way he says <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Imagine hearing that as you're about to go down the log on Splash Mountain. That's what I can't mm-hmm. wait for. This is I the was, perfect song for that. I was, li- I think, a long time ago. I was looking at a behind the scenes for this, and what I love is like they were talking about what's so great about animation is the backgrounds are just nonsense. Exactly. But as as because it's animation, this, the oh viewers go God. with it, right? So at the end, yeah. when it's like um this long ass hallway, like where the fuck even is he? Like, uh, when he slides, like, right there, like, what is this? Where is he? It doesn't matter, because it's animation. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's yeah. beautiful, and, and everyone just goes with it. Whereas and with that's live action, yeah. it looks... You're asking yourself, like, what the fuck happened? Oh, this right here. <laughs> yeah. This... That... Like, there's not one bad shot in this movie, also. Because mm-hmm. it's, like, so well detailed and all that stuff but yeah i mean when you're talking about like oh what room is he in you know you you don't care because you know animation gets to flaunt its extravagance that you can't otherwise do in live action and that's why like the live action films they've been a little just don't they've been so off any live yeah, action please. adaptation is i think the point here right is that that's actually a key uh pillar as to why they don't work Peter, what you just like, that's Mm -hmm. the perfect illustration as to why it can't translate. Like, I knew, like, we knew it was off the minute um, it said not Sawenya in a. Oh my God. Don't bring up that remake. (laughs) Well, like. But the moment that. I just can't wait to be king. Yeah, like that whole sequence Mm -hmm. is extravagance and everything like that. But you lose that when they're just running around in the savannah and that's i was it. embarrassed you know. for the people on that movie when i saw that sequence it was abysmal <laughs> that honestly was abysmal that's such a fun song and it was i actually liked it <laughs> i didn't i did not I... it's just the the fucking cgi like lions looking at you through the camera the entire time and it just looks so boring you don't have any of the just like running around with other baby animals though Tati Go watch a, a nature documentary. Too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's her name, right? Tati? What? What? Her. Charlotte? La- oh my god. Who's Tati? <laughs> Have you seen this movie? <laughs> I'm Whoa. bad with names. You yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. Names don't matter. Um, she's great, though. I love her. Uh, yeah, she's great. But the way that that da- dance, like you know, again, hearkening back to previous Disney movies, you know, like Cinderella and all that, those beignets look fantastic. <laughs> beignets. <laughs> I've had trouble back the longest time saying that name, beignets. 
Benyaz. It would come out as Benyaz. 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 <laughs> I don't know why. Benass. <laughs> this is Dad a family ass. show. What is wrong with you? Get out. <laughs> You're canceled. Did so anyone catch that line about a a a, poor, a young woman of your background would have a hard time managing a restaurant like that? Mm-hmm. I think that was because she's poor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Disney did what they usually do uh, <laughs> when it comes to racial issues and just not address it. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I guarantee you before and if they, they do address it it is no they don't sorry though. go on but I I mean with this film anyway and I feel like at the very beginning of like working on this film they thought like okay like do we address it do we not and then I at some point during development they're just like yeah we're just not gonna address race like it doesn't even exist in this world mm-hmm. I think is basically how they decided to go about it well <laughs> in a I guess a sad twist of fate or maybe all too predictable could that have been one of the factors why the film wasn't as financially successful in the united states of america um in 2009 no, not in 2009 is... i don't think people were asking for that in 2009 i think today that could have affected people there would be a hundred mm-hmm. articles like it it doesn't yeah yeah like it doesn't address shit but in 2009 i feel like people would probably prefer it that way because at that point, 2009, you got to remember, people were like, we're in a post-racial America. Uh, racism. Yeah, we ended like, it a year ago. It was like Obama. Yeah. Yeah. Obama, you know, became president. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, well, that's it. America is no longer racist. Yeah. So there was no real want for people didn't. There wasn't a want from people to address racism it was more of like no we're over it like don't even bring it up well like shut the fuck let, up. let me just clarify in case i wasn't clear about that do you f- i guess what i was trying to to say is the fact that this is a black character mm-hmm. a black lead character did that somehow become a factor in the film's performance at the box office in 2009 maybe because there were definitely a lot of people excited you know first black princess obviously but Unlike today, like, again, there isn't that fever pitched mm-hmm. screech. And I don't mean like this Black in a negative Panther, way. Like Black Panther, basically. The Black yeah, Panther. Effect. Like, yeah, like, just this need for, like, no, like, we want mm-hmm. diversity. Representation. Back then, it was just like, I guess, but I mean, we already have a black president, so it's like, <laughs> do we even need what is representation? Yeah. It was a different time. <laughs> yeah. It's so. Now there's like, yeah. yeah. I know. Eleven years ago. I know. Yeah. The now the name of 20, you know it? Hollywood is the dire need for representation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like anything, first, I mean, it, it took until two thousand nine. But I'm sure that there, for however little people seem to care, there were circles that appreciated. I think perhaps we are all examples of why the film you know from a creative standpoint from a quality standpoint the legacy has endured and in fact i i feel like as the years in the decade basically i can't believe i'm saying decade now has gone by the the film has aged so so beautifully uh overall as a piece although that is an interesting perspective that because of you know this being a disney animated movie and not addressing race i wonder if have have we had like a whole cancel Tiana thing happen yet, or is that just inevitable at this point that we're going to be looking back more on this like the help? No, I think more people are just like, well, there is one thing that people have talked about with this film, which is about to happen right right now, and it's that like every time yeah. you put a black individual in an animated film, they got to kind of disappear their blackness <laughs> yeah. for like the majority of the film. Uh. And yeah. again, I, it's believed to be, and I believe this, it's mainly done because when you market to the states and stuff and you get your diversity points, you can show the beginning of the film in which 
they are black and they are themselves. But then when you have to market to other places that are not as woke They're as the United me. States, um, people usually single out China. They show... Um, oh my god, they're really bad at that. Ugh. Yeah. Remember that, the stuff with John Boyega being like diminished in the... What yeah, was they it? literally oh. removed him from the Force Awakens poster. Um, really? Yeah. Completely. completely. Yes. <gasps> um, and they, they can just show them when they're cute, cartoony characters. Show them when they're frogs and stuff and not show them... Yeah, being black. Yeah. So... And there has yeah. been a cry, which sucks, but you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that's kind of the only complaint that I've heard about this movie. Mm-hmm. That you know they love this movie, but the fact that she's herself for like point two seconds, <laughs> and and you know, it's 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 very much relevant as it always has been. But a film that I think all of us are looking forward to because it looks amazing. But I if. It really like occurred to me when I saw the trailer for it. Soul mm-hmm. does this same thing too. Yeah. Mm. People started saying that again when the Soul trailer dropped. And Soul looks amazing. But it, yeah, it is the same thing where it's like, oh, it is a black guy and play, embracing a lot of black American culture and gone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it really is this China comes off feeling like you're trying to have your cake and eat it too with being woke and still getting uh racist people's money (laughs) and um yeah no that's not a it's it's the same i don't think it's nearly as bad but i think it's along the same complaints when it's like this is our first gay character and it's like (laughs) They're gay because they they Where? they did a hand movement for two seconds in the background, <laughs> which is and offensive, <laughs> yeah. really homophobic, you know, stuff right there. And I should say, we're all I think going to be a little. I'm bracing myself for how bad they're doing that with. So Jungle Cruise is going to come out I think soonish, maybe next year, and they're supposed to, supposedly the first official out character. Jack Whitehall, a British comedian, is doing that, and from what I read, it's I feel it's going to be a disaster how that character is portrayed, because um the um I don't I forgot the name of the show, but there's going to be a new show animated with its first bisexual lead. It's already out. out. out? Yeah, it's called the Owl House. Okay. Yeah, because that Lufu shit in Beauty and the Beast was offensive. That was really <laughs> insulting. That was... What the fuck was that? <laughs> there was a whole media circus for that? Is that really how you see gay people? Oh, mm. that's that's not flattering. At all. No. <laughs> so, yeah. But you're right. Another different point to what Kyle was saying about Facilier being, like, perhaps the last great Disney villain. And it's been 10 years now. Excuse me? One of the last great... Wait, who is another mother... great? Mother Gothel. Say the name again? <laughs> Tangled, Mother what? Gothel. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Facilier is better just because... Well, yes, he is. But I feel like Mother Gothel is very much underrated and i love her and i think i think she's the most real villain out of all of them and so that's why i love her <laughs> go listen to she, our tangled audio le- commentary for more details on that but putting putting her to the be... side all right what other villains can we talk about since facilier most of the villains have I mean, been no last really. minute lame ass twists yeah the and same it, twist almost the exact yeah. same twist in all the movies and mother Gothel, she you knew her plan the whole time and she was just a bitch. <laughs> like Hans you connected with that. Uh, kinda. Um, uh, that one. That one was interesting. That was one, it. Like at, oh, the first time God. when you watch it for the first time, you're like, oh, it's definitely a shock. At least for, yeah, but then after it's like, okay. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> that. It had the benefit of being early in that decade, but by the end of the 2010s, like that was a tired like twist yeah because then thing. they did it in like Wreck-It Ralph and 
uh, Zootopia. Zootopia, yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I I would say <laughs> Zootopia. I think is better that there isn't a villain because there That's racism the isn't like a thing, like a a manifestation of a thing that you can just like. I don't know. Stop. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's not a, a a physical thing. Bad guy that you just go like, ah, oh, I ca- I captured racism. You won't hurt anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. ever again. <laughs> like no, <laughs> it, it's something that you yourself have to take charge of in in your life and yourself and work on. It's not a bogger. You can't yeah. just put it back in the closet. We had yeah, the same yeah. twist in Coco with Ernesto de la Cruz. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the- oh yeah. <laughs> the Incredibles 2 was a really bad one. The screen slayer yeah. or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah, they keep doing it and it's just like they oh, Big Hero 6. Oh, that's right. Big mm-hmm. <laughs> This this whole last decade was just a plot twist. Oh, it's gotcha. like oh, there's like and it's I I find the like known villains so much more interesting and memorable. Than any mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. than any of the twists, right? Like Scar and Doctor Facilier and uh, it's Shrek's place. Uh, all these um, very it's clearly cool. laid out villains mm-hmm. in these older Disney movies. I I don't know. They're more fun. They're more interesting. They're more memorable. Rather, I mean, than look just... at the classic ones: uh, Captain Hook. You know, yeah, Corella Deville, yeah, yeah, so so much Maleficent. Better. You know, the list goes on. In fact, that may be like the most interesting aspect of these movies. I mean, like all these years later, Captain Hook, Corella Deville, their legacies in a, in and of themselves. Jafar uh-huh. or Janir? <laughs> You're so dumb. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow I'm like who's we, Janir <laughs> we all stay quiet for like a second going, what I love Louis he's yeah. a funky crocodile he's great that's, that's one of the I think the positives <laughs> also of this is more so than I think a lot of other ones around its time and maybe of any time I love all the side characters. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like... Oh, God. I love <laughs> guns. I love the, the gunfire. <laughs> well. I like characters, especially in these DC movies, with, like, quirky goals. Like, yeah. he's a crocodile, mm-hmm. and he just he just wants to play jazz. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, it, it's endearing. I like that. Again, yeah. how it's does like, that work in live action, though? It doesn't. It doesn't. Nope. But it's like Winnie Does the Pooh. Like, like he that. just he just wants to eat some fucking honey, you know. That's um, his goal. <laughs> I like. But yeah, it. like these quirky. Yeah, I miss that too. The quirky characters too. I mean, usually like you would meet a you quirky cool. character here and there in like the modern movies, but that would be like for only like two seconds. But there's Olaf. Olaf is not really quirk. <laughs> that well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they kind of take it a little far. <laughs> I would pay Only anything to see Peter's reaction to Olaf's Frozen Adventure again. He oh loved it. Oh my god. It almost <laughs> fucking ruined Coco. <laughs> almost. I can't believe they expected audiences you see, but to that... wait 30 goddamn minutes. Did, did I tell you? Movie. I don't think you know, Peter, but somebody legit almost walked out of the movie theater when that started playing <laughs> they should have they sat they st- they stood up like next to me and they were just like is this frozen or are we in to see coco and i was like no it's coco this is just playing before and she's like oh this is really long <laughs> <laughs> oh this is one of the best ones I love this song Kyle, so much. The music is about, so good in this movie. No, it, it's outstanding. But Kyle, do you want to talk about that time uh, where we uh, confused Peter with a song that's similar to this, but from a different movie? Do you remember this? I don't. I don't remember. You don't remember this? 
So we no. were uh, driving. We were driving back from a movie, and he hadn't heard of the song "When We're Human Again," the a cut song from Beauty and the Beast that was included in like a special oh. edition. <laughs> okay, all right, I remember that now. What are you Holy talking shit. about? And talk about you, because so I was Me? playing the song on, on my car when we're human again from that, and Peter mm-hmm. was like, "Wait a minute, this is the same song from the one that we're listening to right now, The Princess and the Frog." <laughs> when I'm when we're a human being, <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, they are the same song, pretty much. Yeah. But it sounds, but it sounds nothing alike, though. But um, <laughs> with the Randy Newman twist, yeah. <laughs> Without a human being. <laughs> Plants. I mean, it's such a dick. Nazeel. God. Huh? Na. Na. Nabeen. Nabeen. <laughs> Nabeen. Yes, Nabeen. Yes. Naboo. 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 At you, I you know what I remember reading the re- the reviews too of this film, and I think one of the complaints was that the lesson of the film was a little muddled. Um, hmm. which maybe I can guess because I the whole yeah, thing I is see that. it's good to go after your dream, but in do. Right? But in doing so, don't, you know, lose sight of the shit that you got now that's good. It's it's a bit of... I think it's overall a good message. But it mm-hmm. can be... I get that it's a little muddled, maybe. I don't know. I see it can be... I, never... I can see that it can be interpreted wrong when she chooses to stay as a frog instead of going after her dream (laughs) yeah it can be a a little weird um i never saw that or interpreted the whole message of that Mm -hmm. i i i on my my reading of the of the message of the movie was more of like you know baseline just like work work for your dreams instead of wishing upon it you know on a star like the old Disney movies of yore. Well, you know, isn't the and, the message basically the dig a little deeper? He fit. Um, it's not what you want, but what you need that's important. Right. Um, I mean, I could, I, I could see what Peter's trying to say. I, I, at I do one too. point, I, I, I did see that uh-huh. because I don't know. I mean, maybe this is like super weird, and maybe I shouldn't be saying it. I don't know. But like you know, as a female, <laughs> I mean, Her if you're story. right to say that, that's a fact. By the way, is um, this brown I face? Can, I... What? Oh my god! <laughs> is this wood? Look, brown look, face. he's oh white now. <laughs> it's magic. It doesn't count. No, <laughs> so, wait, well, okay. Now that uh, okay. Oh god, I just thought of something. So, if, like in Harry Potter, oh, god. like. If you chain with the the polyjuice potion or whatever. Oh is, my god. Is it, is Alexis, it you were face? saying. Okay. And you change it to a person of color. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, you were saying as a woman. That did as long as they're not trans, my mind right? at some point. According to. Um, <laughs> oh god. Don't. We're what? not going to dig into that well. What did he say? At least know. according to. Uh, I don't want to know. Like, <clears throat> In context of the Harry Potter universe, you know, he said, you know, as long as they're not trans. Oh. Is J.K. Rowling. Oh, my God. So. Is J.K. I'm, I'm, that's in, in accordance to J.K. Rowling. You know? uh, endorsing. Um, Who is she? Uh, Who's that? Uh, Don't know being, a, being a spokesman of the fantasy fair, mm-hmm. I have to say that trans lives do matter. Well, yeah. I mean, Just so we're clear. I mean, yeah. It, it and it's clear that she's full of shit, J.K. Rowling. Uh, in particular, <laughs> when it comes, I mean, in anything really these days, but especially with trans, her being transphobic. You were saying, Alexis, she, she as a woman, how you do were you saying? create yeah. something like the Paula Juice Potion, but then like not understand <laughs> oh trans God. people? 
I don't know. Anyways, go ahead. You were talking about how you're a female or something. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) You're on a roll, Peter. Nothing. No! What was the comment? (laughs) Um, (laughs) that's what we were talking about earlier. Pre-polyjuice potion. Um... That did cross my mind at some point, because, again, as a female, you know, the expectation of, like, choosing the guy or, like, letting, you know, the guy do all the work. Well, not all the work. Like, being supported by a guy type of thing, yeah. like, I, I'm not a fan of mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, that for sure did cross my mind, but... um I obviously see, like, the bigger picture and what they were trying to go for. You're saying sugar daddies are not in? <laughs> oh, and we should have, we should have, you know, pointed this out when, you know, Peter talked about... Also, he's a piece of shit, like... Yeah. We, so, we should have pointed this out uh, when we were talking about the whole racial component um, uh-huh. and how they don't address it. As much as, of course, I love them, we should acknowledge that, look... The representation definitely wasn't there behind the camera. Of course, you know, John Musker and Ron Clements are legends in my view. I love all of their films. They're amazing. And they think this, to me, I feel this is a truly terrific and I think just great film. So how was Treasure Planet? Fantastic. For the most part. Anyway, um, in this case, this is where some people would point to, well, it they probably wouldn't be the people to even go in that area, of course, right? And maybe perhaps part of why there was a bit of a muddleness to it could be, of course, behind, uh, from the people behind uh, behind the scenes here. But, I mean, they mm-hmm. did it with Moana. Make way, make way. Isn't that movie Thank also you. being criticized, though, for diminishing, you know, native people? Or yeah, is it? Did because it? Because they were like, you used it as a as a front to, you know, and it also, it, it, a lot of people think that Moana comes across as disingenuous in terms of like what it's, you know, it's representation and all that stuff. And just because... Uh, you have this representation, you know, you know, you use it to paint this narrative of, you know, the Disney formula it's and all big, that stuff. Massive, it's just like this long big budgeted Disney film. It's it's as authentic as that can possibly be in that situation. <laughs> like I don't know yeah. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Going down the bag. Uh, you... <laughs> yeah. It's like seeing just... a Doritos commercial isn't authentic. I mean <laughs> Yeah, it's as authentic as it can be for being a Doritos commercial, but at, at that point, either it exists or it doesn't. Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you want. Yeah. Going down the body, which is kind of like my thing, you know, my go-to for most of these movies that we've discussed, and the the Princess and the Frog and Moana. For however many criticisms that we could, you know, take into account, I do feel that. It is creating a net positive, you know, like the message. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, look at um, Coco. Mm-hmm. I feel like that movie, I mean, maybe not fully represents, you know. All Latin culture. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it did a pretty damn good job, you know. Yeah. Um, and my... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um my family was uh uh on my father's side they were thrilled that Moana exists cuz finally they have a Pacific Islander representation in in a in a Disney film, you know, or like a major film for that matter because we are of, you know, Pacific Island, you know, descent and that is a huge component of it, you know. And my sister Erica, she took that with you know, you know, in her stride. Yeah. The, the, I've the fact seen that the it's videos. A, yeah, yeah. She was absolutely thrilled that there's someone who you know who has a dark complexion like her. She also, has I mean, that, ghost it, demon buddies. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ghost demon buddies. It reminds me of Night on Bald Witch Mountain. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't know what that is. <laughs> That's from Fantasia. Yeah, uh, Fantasia. It's one of oh, the I best parts that. of Fantasia. Chernabog. Yeah, Chernabog. Chernabog comes oh. out. I haven't seen it. Consider like, the right. old, the Chernabog? real, yes, I know who the real is. Ultimate Evil in the Disney animated Pantheon. Yeah, Pantheon. Because he's he's basically Satan. Basic, mm-hmm. basically. He's the um, big big but villain. But there's Hades. No, but he's yeah, the big big the villain Hades in the um, Kingdom War. Keepers books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's the big villain in the Kingdom Keepers. Oh, books. Chernabog. Yeah. Chernabog. Oh, I thought you were talking about Doctor Facility. I'm no, like, no, uh, no, no, no. What? Hades. <laughs> Hades is more like a used car salesman more than anything. <laughs> going down to buy you. Um, and like, yeah, uh, talking about quirky characters, he's in love mm-hmm. with the with the star. And it's like awesome, you know. <laughs> you do. <laughs> it is sweet, uh, my girl. I love him so. I love what they use tiny characters. And they make him all tough, and they go after the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> but then they get hurt, and they cry. And in this cry. one, they die. Well, <laughs> yeah. no spoilers. It's pretty, like, the way that he goes out is pretty freaking graphic, mm-hmm. too. I mean, you don't see and, it, oh, but just, like, like, the sound. Not that I, not that I like, love that scene, but um, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Facilier. Like after when he like walks away and he's just like he's like looking over his shoulder to see if anybody saw and he's just like that's right, so hilarious <laughs> because oh look guys it's, it's a tr- bug like like he act like he just murdered someone yeah but he just, it's a bug like no one would give a shit in in reality <laughs> guys. If someone saw that he stepped on a bug no one would be like oh my god he murdered everyone would just be like oh how you okay. doing night e- <laughs> lovely evening no one's gonna be like what did you do they're like oh he stepped on a bug okay <laughs> but he acts like he just murdered someone and now he's like trying to act cool you about it like no one would give a shit <laughs> i just think that's hilarious uh just one of the things though like uh just our previous discussion about uh the perhaps mixed messages and some of the criticisms i feel we can all agree I'm sure I know that we have strong feelings on both sides on this movie, but the one that was easily the most muddled and maybe have done the most harm is Pocahontas. Yeah. Yeah, but again, that's like the 90s, you know, you could easily, you know, even though it is bad, you know, and the message is, is bad, it is a byproduct of the time, I guess. <laughs> you see, I, I feel so I, for- I feel so two ways about that because like I... It's basically neoliberalism and why it sucks and why it needs to go away. But in an animated space, it was trying to go for like peace, but it ended up both sides in the situation and considering yeah. the the people at hand and how they were exterminated in real life, it, it was just inc- it, it came off incredibly tone deaf. That was Yeah. Oof, beyond problematic. And they haven't fumbled like that in a long time. So at least since then, it seems like. Oh, I feel like after that, they're very much, you know, aware. aware. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I mean, I, I, sh- I hope so. <laughs> also, it's funny. Our characters go against uh, Trump supporters right here. What? Why are you making this political? <laughs> <laughs> I love. I just think the animation's so good. I love the way they make the Bayou and New Orleans and just the way they look. The everything. the lighting in this movie <sighs> is so good. <laughs> just, just sorry. Like the sky, it kind of <laughs> looks like it kind of looks like the sky in Pirates. <laughs> I'm just so. Imagine, <gasps> imagine if they come out in uh, Slash Mountain. <laughs> yeah, you'll I probably just, see them. Oh, those yeah. three. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Um, oh. you guys should know. It's probably in Japan because it, it seems like Japan gets all the good shit that Disney is making recently. Um, we're watching some behind the scenes of the parks, and it was like animated. Um. It was animatronics of like animated Belle, 
and she oh, had yeah, a horse. The Tokyo yeah, and it looked so fucking real. Like it was mm-hmm. crazy. It was like. Did you not watch the Imagineering story? No, he didn't no, watch that. You know um, the answer. Um, but I can see them doing that kind of shit with um, this whatever they do. Um, however, the remake's gonna look. Yeah, we've talked about that mm-hmm. repeatedly on Fantasy Fair. Uh, that Bell well, animatronic. Excuse is, me. <laughs> that Bell animatronic is the new frontier. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Because it's animated. Like, it looks like freaking Well, you've seen Roger the Rabbit. Spider-Man one, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I don't think he... I, yeah. s- I saw, like, a small glimpse where it's, like, it's literally swinging or some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's doing, like, crazy acrobatics and all that shit. And I, honestly, it's really, really, really impressive, like, that they're able to manage the... Fe- and also, like, how fluid all these animatronics mm-hmm. are, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw like we unfortunately we haven't been on Rise of the Resistance, but we've seen and we the never footage will. <laughs> and like, the way that <laughs> yeah, and the Vote way that Kylo Biden. Ren. I mean, Kylo Ren is so great. The way that Kylo Ren, and it would be better if Adam Driver yeah. agreed to give his likeness, though, but he didn't do that. You know, to show his actual face, but no, because oh, yeah, that's it's crazy on the that they yeah. hired him. Like, why did they hire him? Yeah. I, I they, would imagine okay, that's hap- like bare minimum to be hired for for Star Wars. And they hired him when he wasn't that big, obviously, because they were going for like up and comers when they hired for The Force Awakens. Yeah. So how the fuck does he get away with getting the role and being like, fuck you, I'm not signing away my life. Harrison Ford didn't get away with that. He had to go to all those conventions and all those all the media. Yeah, and he hated it. It was hilarious. <laughs> so like, how did he get away with it? Because you know, like, that doesn't have, fly yeah. for literally anyone they've ever hired since they've fucking bought Star Wars. Well, didn't he, like, completely stop going to all the press stuff, like, for Rise of Skywalker? I honestly think he just hated that movie. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, with good reason, too. Honestly? Like, I obviously hated the film. I don't think he did. I think he's he just doesn't like doing that shit. I, he really is, like, an awkward fucker like i don't know <laughs> there's the excuse mm-hmm. that he had three movies come out that month really mm-hmm. with marriage story the report and then the rise of skywalker so they could have been doing press for other projects like there was a story yeah, but you would think that disney would prior you would think that disney would prioritize um that marketing over everything like well, that you're didn't like, he you're, like you're didn't fucking he showing say... up to that no didn't he he say uh that he was gonna do the other ones because they for sure weren't gonna get a lot of as much press as, much, as Rise yeah. of Skywalker. But there was also a story, I think, during The Last Jedi, where um, Mark Hamill basically went up to him and he's like, hey, like, within the story, you know, I probably, like, raised you, like, we're supposed to be family and stuff like that. Like, and in, in a sense, to sort of build maybe a familial bond, he's asked him, like, do you want to hang out, go for lunch or whatever? And, and uh, Adam Driver was just like, no. <laughs> so they did it i love it i'm sure it was a polite no it, he's not uh from what i can tell like yeah he was he probably wasn't rude but it was probably blunt a polite bluntness like <laughs> no i'm good i mean i can yeah, see no, why he bro. said no though because he, he's kind of hates him <laughs> <laughs> and he very much likes to get in the headspace of the character that he's playing. Yeah, yeah he's a great actor. He's yeah. an actor. <laughs> you got to say it a little different. But I'm. It's just like speaking who, of genuine. Who says no to? Not, not that I don't like this song, yeah. but this is my least favorite song. Really? <laughs> yeah. But, I love uh, there, this. There's song. like a specific reason though, because because um, you don't work. You're not a For, romantic. So when they would do after Christmas, it would be like Valentine's for two months. And this is one of the songs I would always play, so uh, that's why. <laughs> there are so many love songs in Disney to pick from, and this is the one that they played the most? No, no, no. Um, like, the... Because we get, like, one CD. Mm. And so, for some reason, like, whenever I would be on stage, this is the one that would be playing all the time. 
just l- real quick, who says no to having the literal image of you in a Disney theme park? That is just crazy. That's like immortalizing you for like life. You know? I'm sorry. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. He would 100% hate that. I know he would, but it's like. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I mean, I could see how normal people would not be against that, but he's not. <laughs> like how fast would all of you sign away your likeness to be in a Disney oh. park? <laughs> <laughs> Kind of to be in a Disney park, it's kind of a way to get sign- smacked by a Mickey oh, Mouse actor. Do you think they get paid? Like, I'm I don't know. Yeah, they, not, I'm sure like it was a all on their contract. Pay? I mean, I feel like cause all, all of the other actors have come back. It's literally anybody, everyone but Adam Driver. They have to do theme park <laughs> shit. It's, I think it's is all- Poe in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he He's is. in the videos. All Oscar Isaac, John Boyega, and uh, Daisy Ridley—they're all on there. I, I but I, th- I, I think maybe their thought process was, well, Kylo Ren is the guy in the mask. He's the bad guy, so you know, you don't need his face. But I think <laughs> the best stuff with Kylo is him without his mask, and mm-hmm. then he has such a loyal following. Because they like Ben Solo, you know, they like J. J. Him Abrams was without like, the mask. Yo, we gotta do the mask. Mm. They gotta bring him. Also, up. he was like one of the first people to like go. <laughs> so, I still, um, I still hold that bringing back the mask could have worked better if it had been incorporated into the story at all, instead of just randomly like we're making the mask. <laughs> like the the movie just cuts because of action figures, and it's like. Oh, now a monkey's repairing the mask. Okay, I guess. All right, moving on. <laughs> Why? Like it could have been. It could have been like him wanting to hide. You know the shame of what he's what he's done and his choices and all that stuff. You could have easily done something like that. A character beat, but have we? We mentioned it's so funny. Mama Odie though. Like, isn't she the yeah. best? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love her ship. I can't home. wait for the scene to be on Splash Mountain. Actually I've been thinking a little deeper. for the, like a while. I I don't feel like they can put the entire movie into that ride. They can. Like I'm sure there is a way, but like I was like for the longest time I I just I always felt like you can't put that entire movie into the ride. And especially like the placement of like the original ride is you just know they're just gonna like copy and paste it <laughs> yeah you know to the the ride from the movie and so like the way the ride goes i feel like you're just gonna have to like rearrange a few scenes from the movie to make it fit well to ride. be clear and, it, and if, it, to me that sounds that looks really weird the pro- i could see the part like like the only thing i could see clearly is like the drop the going up part that's Dr. Facilier. Yeah. The ending is Mama Odie. And then the part where, like, you kind of go up and down, like, a roller coaster. Um, I could see that being, like, the going down the bottom. Yeah, clear. Not part. not every song will be utilized. And, and the premise that they release is that this is not supposed to be a retelling of the movie. It's supposed to be, like, mm-hmm. a ride through the swamp, literally, guided by Tiana. With, of That's course, songs from wondering. the movie. Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. So I thought, like, yeah, why not just make the story not the movie exactly, mm-hmm. but just them trying to make it to Mama Odie, right. and then the ending, you know, what the fairy is at, have that be dig a little deeper. It, yeah, so, uh, yeah. That, that's just, just that was just something I've been I don't know. wondering about. But in terms of like not retelling the whole entire movie, I mean, they've done it before. Peter Pan's flight. Um, the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, they have done that in like four minute span. So I'm pretty mm. sure that well, I think they what, could what David is saying is that the, they the structure to. itself does not support that. That's what he's saying is that yeah. unless you literally tear down segments, if not the entire thing, and they can't even afford, much less if they even wanted to do that, we know it's going to be a reskin of the same ride system that's there. So we're just literally mm-hmm. covering, we're, we're table dressing basically with this property. That's that's kind of, and David's point is that the scenes themselves will not support for however the songs you want to use in the order of the movie, which is why the premise is not going to be a, a chronological retelling of events. 
Yeah. That's, I think, the point. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, um, oh, fun sequence. Great, great fun sequence. This, oh, my uh, God. It's this amazing. Part. This is my favorite song in the movie. I love it. <laughs> this is. Oh, really? Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's. Um, yeah. Now that time has like kind of passed since the news of the whole uh, reskin of uh, Splash Mountain. What do you think it should be called? I think they can call it the same thing. The Probably name. like Splash Mountain and then for a limited time featuring Tiana. I don't think... Th- should, should they really rename it? Does it matter? I mean, a lot of people mm. are saying that they should like, you know, rename it, but keep the word mountain on it, in it. Tiana's Mountain? That sounds wrong. Probably. Tiana's Mountain. Yeah, I that does sound wrong. I keep the name. I don't mind. Whatever. It'll be a better ride other while. Because this is just yeah. amazing. This is such a, a match made in heaven. And in this literal structure here that we're seeing in the movie, um, the boathouse, whatever, it's going to be the new like icon of Splash Mountain. They're going to redecorate the peak of it yeah. in a way. But, and we should also, you know, we haven't mentioned yet, but Anika has an amazing vocal range i mean it's just beautiful like that's kind of the requirement right a lot of these princesses have to have amazing voices but she's one of my favorites um yeah yeah. i could see this shot right here yeah replacing the fairy right there Mm -hmm. and just kind of like okay they made it and you just just go straight to the like ending that they transform back somehow i don't know (laughs) fuck you you're not supposed (laughs) to work hard (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> supposed to get married hmm. have 50 children and shut your ass up <laughs> <laughs> okay hey that's mama Odie's message not mine she actually played angelica in hamilton at one point hmm. jennifer lewis no anika yeah oh, okay. she was she was the original one, I believe. What's Hamilton? Yeah. <laughs> off the, the off Broadway before they hit it big. Explain it to me in great detail. Okay, was she, but here's the thing. Was she satisfied, though? You're welcome. And we should also mention, of course, um, because it is inherent with the setting of the movie New Orleans. I'm sure it means a lot to have that community be represented on a movie like this, considering that this comes relatively recent after Katrina, at least when this was released, right? Yeah. Also, like, I, I don't know. It this is kind of modern too. This movie. I mean, it's not like modern, modern where like they're flipping their iPhones out and all that stuff. But I think that this is like a nice era to examine. Mm. Just a new, you know, New Orleans because this is like post French, you know, industrialism and everything like that. With with the with this, I think is really nice. The age of jazz exploration. Dig little deep. Oh, all those beads. I wonder how they got there. I wonder what was done to earn said beads. So he's known her for two days? <laughs> yep. I think Here we go. Just a day, right? Maybe two. A day and two, two nights. Two days. Yeah. <laughs> Say a day and two nights. He's ready. He's going to marry that frog. <laughs> Do you feel like that'll ever go away uh, with the staple of these Disney princess movies? What do you feel? Do you feel it should go away that aspect of the romance and how it, it's handled? Honestly, no. Uh, yeah, it's because it's, it is kind of yeah. 
it's one of those things that you know it is the sorry for my referentials but it, it is the tale as old as time you know i don't think a person know. falls in love with the person yeah and all that stuff but the thing is is that you don't really need romance in your disney movies anymore i mean like moana moana didn't have any romance in it at all and i think that I, you know stuff like that works for the you know the better i think the last one do you think to raya have is gonna have was uh lilo and stitch yeah that didn't have I, romance that did are you are you speaking i'm not gonna go there <laughs> um <laughs> Raya the Last Dragon, I don't think that's going to have any... Well, I mean, for the future Disney princess films that do have romances, there is there seems to be a constant criticism amongst all of the Disney princess brand films that this is just one... That do feature romances and that they're just... They're passed on as this love at first sight, whether it be like immediately want to get married or after three days or after how many, Mm -hmm. whatever have you. And I asked Peter... Do you feel that'll ever go to go away and should it go away? And he said no, and I kind of agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um it's a But here's the thing, like tale. I don't like when yeah. you meeting your true love, love at first sight, marrying them a day later. Um it's it's obviously unrealistic, but so is being a frog. Like it, it it's just supposed to be <laughs> Yeah. It's like heightened. It's a fairy tale. Yeah, like, it, it's yeah. heightened emotions, right? It's mm-hmm. sort of. It's sort of like when I don't know. I th- I think I saw a Twitter discussion. Uh, and yes, I'm bringing it in. The last Jedi bitches. Um, I knew it. <laughs> Ryan Ryan <laughs> Johnson. I think someone. Okay, put that on the tally. Someone was chastising him. It's like, well, I can't connect with them because I don't literally um live in space in a rebellion and all that stuff (laughs) and he was like bless him like he's he was trying to explain like no like you connect not because you're literally the son of royalty and genocide but like similar emotions that these characters have um you have them as well. Only the characters in these fantasies, because their fantasies are heightened, you know, like a million times. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you've felt the need to go off an adventure and stuff like that. You're not literally going to become the last hope for a rebellion spanning the galaxy, but maybe you'll go to college, go to a road trip, you know, move out of your small town. <laughs> like, obviously... That yearning or, and that experience is going to, is, you can connect with that, even if it's the fantasy yeah. aspect heightens it. And I think it's the same with romance. Like Luke, like Luke is relatable because he wants, you know, something greater than what's in yeah. his backyard, you know, and that's where he, that's why the binary sunset scene is so profound. If it, if not been used a bajillion times, you know, in Star Wars, um, but it is like those connections that you have, you know, you know, the human elements of Star Wars and of these movies, it is the most, you know, connectable part of this movie and the connectable tissue to have the human element in it. And let's bring know? it back to Tiana I, here, because I feel like a lot of us see a little bit of ourselves in her and that at least how I relate to her is not because we want to open a restaurant or, or do this or that. But we all come from a town that people are content, and this is not a criticism, it's just a reality, people are content to be as is. And there's just something more within all of us that just have expectations that are beyond just this, you know, this I'm sorry, I feel like a lot of those people aren't earning their beads properly. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, yes, I agree. And you can even do it with, like, their uh, relationship. Like, obviously, you're not going to go out and propose to somebody you met a day and two nights ago. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you can relate in the sense that, like, you know, you 
might find somebody that encourages you to go after your dreams, who supports you and, you know, believes in your dream as much as you do, uh, believes mm-hmm. in you in general. Like, that's what I feel you should take away from it, not, oh, he's proposing already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Going back to the question, you know, I, I think like stuff like Moana and all that stuff has proven that you don't need it, but it is nice to have that story element of like, you know, true love and all that stuff in the movie, mm-hmm. you know, so. Well, even um, Mulan, I guess there is a romance there with, you know, but really like her, this is why we feel like. Uh, it's such a secondary it is it's it's kind of to me anyway an afterthought because her accomplishment isn't that oh she found true love she saved china Mm -hmm. yeah which by the way we're gonna have big accomplishment we'll have a commentary on that movie pretty soon so it'd be nice if like they do the love story but change it up like i feel um aladdin did a pretty good job because it was through the guy's point of view and not the girl's which is which i thought was interesting yeah and it was the girl who was like saying i'm not a prize to be won and everything like that and yeah so i wish they would do more of that rather than kind of the same thing over and over again yeah shake it up a bit well like we said like tangled could have easily been renamed rapunzel and flynn rider because they're pretty much Mm co-leads um in that sense well, like that one, like we got to see their story mm-hmm. evolve. And Entangled, actually, he said, like, oh, and after telling her, like, over and over again, she finally said, yes. So some time passed before if they actually. watched Tangled the series. <laughs> yeah. So it's now canon. It, like, sometime. <laughs> but. Yeah. Can I be honest? I really, I know you guys like it, and to a certain extent, I get it, and it can be fun. But I, I don't know. I kind of hate the way that Disney. The only way they really address throughout stuff is go like, "LOL, isn't that silly? You can't marry someone you just met." You're a, you're a prince, yeah. you know, you have a talking sidekick, like of course so you're lazy. a princess. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, so you yeah. don't like the meta? No, I think that's really kind of lazy. I don't yeah. mean for them to do that. I think kind of include it in there, but just make it different. Just to be clear, like how many like... times has that happened? Uh, three or four. I'm thinking like yeah. Frozen and... What Zootopia? There was a scene with um, Moana. Moana. Yeah, Zootopia. Moana. You can't yeah. just wish upon a star and you know all your insepid dreams. Hold on, bug murder. Zootopia. Bug murder. Oh shit! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's a so bug. It's it's no one happened. gives a shit. Like, why are you acting? Like <laughs> you're so funny. Also, That's who so would be funny. randomly his, walking around his, in a cemetery? Yeah, I know. His um downfall is uh, interesting. Mm. Who's Doctor Facility? Like I think his and Clayton from Tarzan are like intense. I don't the think graphic his... you feel. Well, I don't. I don't think his is that intense. Okay, well, Doctor, what's Facility? the ending here? Yeah. He gets dragged down to hell, basically, right? Yeah, dragged down to, to the other hell. side. Clayton gets hung. The hung visual is much more uh, for a kids' movie, Star. I think. Star. He gets Pretty. eaten alive, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of them just but fall, right? I feel like right? Clayton is more like, oh, yeah. Shit. Most of the villains just fall. Yeah. And there hasn't oh, been yeah, a villain. It's, yeah, it's just the easiest way to depict death without showing it. Like, they fell. Falling. Uh, fall into an abyss like yeah they're gone they're done <laughs> that's like the easy like frollo 
Yeah. Even though like his was like one of the most malicious and everything like that, he just fell into fire. Ah, uh, but I think they very much exaggerated the fire to for it to be hellfire. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to go back and see it, but I feel like there was kind of an exaggeration when he fell in to make it look more mm-hmm. hellish. Oh no, there, yeah, there was. Because like then he, you also get that visual of when he looks at like the demon statue, and it's just like ugh, in his face. Is Mother Gothel the last villain to like officially die? Who? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> you gotta explain who. <laughs> Mother who? Gothel? <laughs> From Tang. Oh, okay. She died, right? <laughs> she turned yeah, to she, dust. Oh, wait, she, yeah, yeah, she yeah. fell. Dust. Yeah. And fell. <laughs> she, did, did. she did, did. She did, did. Oh, yeah, she I fell too. Know. If you watch Tangled, there's Tangled. <laughs> Didn't you hate Tangled? Oh no, that was Alexis. He hated it. Right? Listen, Thank you. listen to the audio commentary. All is explained. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for plugging our audio commentary for Tangled. We had such a great time. And David, who reviewed it, gave it a glowing review. But so. not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> the the audio commentary, not the movie. The, the movie is great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know you didn't give the movie a glowing review. Oh my god, I didn't give the movie a review. Didn't see it when it came out. Yeah, that says everything, doesn't oh. it? Oh shit! Fuck that. This frog. is a glorious death. Shiny. It's very musical. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said it was intense, but it's also like really fun though. Yeah. Just cause, oh, you're it ready. is a little dark though. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I read something that was like, uh, all of the Disney villains, like they fall to their death or like, uh, get eaten and stuff. Dr. Facili dies beca- uh, from his songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just kind of like drag it's creepy. Him down. It's a creepy visual, but it's so cool. But it, it it doesn't seem like hell. It's like the underworld or some shit like that. Oh, by the way, that tombstone of Facilia, you could easily include that into the Haunted Mansion. So that yep. would be a funny oh, a did funny you guys, story. Did I send you guys that message of um to have uh the Haunted Mansion themed after Dr. Facilia? Like during sometime oh well, like the beginnings of like when they open uh reopen slash Rock. that'd be really cool about the month of mardi gras or the month of mardi gras that would be so cool i mean there's a lot of think there's a lot awesome. of great like overlays you can do with haunted mansion the the only problem is though it di- it does take time to do the night yeah. and before christmas and it's designed to stay for like three or four months because of halloween and christmas and that costs money to do yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, in a perfect world, we can like have a like a whole variety of different overlays for Haunted Mansion. But I still haven't even done the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. <sighs> Same. I mean, the last time I stepped foot in Disneyland was like almost <laughs> a decade ago. So I mean, come <laughs> on. And it'll be another decade. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, if, at least what I'm picking up here, like, what connects, you know, Navita and um, Tiana is they both are missing the, kind of the same thing, and that is love. And that's kind of what they need. Yeah. She needs to give and up on can... her dreams of self-employment and marry a man. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it, isn't it the isn't it the flip here? Is that in this case the guy's dream is the girl, not the other way around? Yeah. But he's kind of trash. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, he's a rich guy. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, of course. But kind of part of, I think, also a little bit of a. 
an underlying message here is that look what happens when you um, have money and when you uh, leave it behind or when it leaves you behind. He's got himbo energy. Yeah. <laughs> himbo. <laughs> Oh, oh this. I, know we, I know we mentioned that before, but I really like the friend. <laughs> Just uh, they could have oh, easily, Charlotte? yeah. Charlotte. What did you, Tati? <laughs> Tati, <laughs> who's Tati? Tati? It's just like <laughs> you said that was her name. Someone is anyway, named Tati. Um, I don't know, but I, I just like that they could have easily written her as like the bitchy friend, basically, <laughs> like just keep showing off her money and always kind of looks down at tiana mm -hmm. like a horrible spoiled but, like the kind i mean this is at the yeah, height of like paris hilton hate too so like you could easily like done that kind of uh stereotype as well mm -hmm. she's spoiled but she's kind yeah no uh, i just really like how much she actually like really cares about tiana it's also its own point yeah out. i mean she is sincere but it also i think is a faithful um portrayal of white privilege in the best way you know she doesn't really have a care in the world and and she does help yeah. when the yeah. story calls her to help but really again this is an animated movie but she didn't really ever help her financially when she could have given the money like such a long time ago well, for I a think, restaurant well i think that was because tiana wanted to do it exactly own, yeah i agree so yeah. And, I don't if, think and i like the, even the if friend... she would have offered i don't think she would have accepted yes yeah, I agree. that's what kind of what i like though because charlotte she wants to respect right. that instead of like and then but when she saw an opportunity though of like oh i can help out yeah. tiana here she went for yeah. it yeah i and then someone uh, pointed i don't think out, she saw it that way <laughs> uh, okay fine yeah it was for her <laughs> for her benefit yeah but still though she thought of her friend <laughs> i don't know but I also some point out like that little detail uh, during the party that she gave Tiana like a blue dress, mm. and they thought that someone said that they think that she had that dress ready for Tiana in case she needed it because all everything that she owns is pink. And she's one of those characters that's like so, so like so much of an airhead, but she's a likable one too because uh, of just yeah. how yeah. over the top she is. Like at the end of the movie where she's like, "Well, I've waited this long, and she's gonna wait another <laughs> twenty years for the the little brother to age so she can marry into royalty." So I mean, that's just. I mean, that, that cracks me it's up. This joke. is so beautiful. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a great scene. I love it. I know. This is... Yeah. I, was in, yeah. I was in literal shock when I saw that the first time. I was like... Oh, yeah, that's the magic oh right there. God. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. You were him. <laughs> <laughs> the second star to the right. That has a you new know meaning what? now. Yeah. Um... I don't think they have, but I always wanted them to add that star in all the, the Disney intros. Oh, the second star? Because oh. you know how it starts with, like, yeah. they look at the star, and then it mm -hmm. pans down to, like, the castle and stuff like that. I always wanted, like, mm -hmm. after that um, movie, after Princess and the Frog, to add a second star. Um, after that, for every Disney or whatever. I thought that would have been mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. This is just, I mean... The lighting God, of this movie this is looks, so Those good. outfits, girl. Uh, which dress, if anybody cares, do they prefer... Uh, is the more iconic dress? This one or, or the the blue one? The green. I like the blue. Make it green, make it blue. <laughs> <laughs> make it pink no there is no pink one always the blue dress make it blue oh. even like in Little Mermaid the blue dress I like mm. the green though green is I think well I don't know I, they're both great I I think green I think is more iconic because it's like symbolizing like her transformation too I think this one <laughs> this dress <laughs> is great too though God, this is rendered so beautifully. I mean, gosh. Yeah, and if they did use like CG and any of like the animation, like it's so seamless too. Imagine if this had come out like after Lion King, that could have changed history. I mean, for the the studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then again, it would have like competed mm -hmm. against Titanic, and that wasn't good for anybody. 
I love how enthusiastic she is, too. Mm -hmm. This is great. Oh, Tiana, again, we mentioned it before on the Fantasy Fair, but wouldn't it be nice to have this at a Disney park? Tiana's place. Wasn't Peter going to go to it? Oh, I love this one. This is a good green deck. (sighs) (laughs) Yeah. I feel you, Peter. I feel you. He got his dream. Can play Jaios. This joke's funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's funny, but it's also kind of like weird. <laughs> I'm, yeah, obviously. So is every other genders. relationship in cinematic history. There's <laughs> yeah. yeah. If the genders were reversed, but I think it's like that honestly, joke, it'd be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, but I actually, I kind of wish they did it differently though. Where she meets, if you remember the party, that one dude that was dressed as like a, um, some Joker, mm-hmm. a court jester, and like he's trying to dance with her, and she, but she like completely blows him off. Yeah, I feel like it would have been better if yeah, he was like ever. there working at the at the restaurant, and she's like, oh hey, what's up? And then, oh, that would have been nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, John Musker and Ron Clements. Good job. Yeah, good job. And guys. they, hey. they would have won that year if it not for Up. So, mm. yeah. John Lasseter. E. Hey, John Lasseter. Hi. E. <laughs> Just call her. Um. Yeah. So good movie. Uh, final thoughts before we end this uh, commentary, guys. One of my favorites. Yeah, Disney-wise. I think we can say that across the board. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I love the characters. I love the the story, the message, the the, the animation is just uh, exquisite. Is the best way of saying it. It's one of the best looking. The soundtrack, the music, just speaks to my soul. Um, mm-hmm. And I have a strong feeling. I think it already is, but it it's going to be uh, looked back very fondly. I, I feel. If not, yeah. If not already, mm-hmm. I think it. I to me, I qualify it as a classic already um yeah classic through and through i think this is going to stand the test of time with you know with cinderella with you know sleeping beauty with you know the likes of those movies and I, it sits com- that it, and like what howard ashman said he wanted to be a part of the legacy that you know that sits comfortably between you know pinocchio and all those different movies and i think that this movie definitely does do that you know, it does sit comfortably with the with the pantheon library that is the Disney um, uh, movies and canon and everything like that. So, um, Renos, final thoughts. I love this movie. What? I like the song that's playing right now, though. <laughs> In the credits. <laughs> oh, this is my least. A favorite end credit song. I mean, <laughs> animation it's not better really than the cool. tangled one. Dude, the tangled one is a bop. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. But I just like it's, it though because it it's a good transition to to the credits, but also like it works really well with the. I guess David's teasing our future fantasy fair uh, series <laughs> where we rank all of the post credit songs in Disney animated <laughs> movies. Oh God! We literally sat like the last like what five minutes of Tangled <laughs> just listening to the song. Yeah, I think we did so. Yeah. This has nothing to do with what you guys are saying, but um, I want them to eventually make another Fantasia film um, in the year 2049 and then call it Fantasia 2049. Okay. That'd be cool. You know what would be really cool? If they took like the actual artwork from the movies and kind of did that and included it in Fantasia somehow. I don't know how. What do you mean the artwork from the movies? Like, like the concept arts, yeah, yeah. Like the the actual concept arts and like the style oh, that they drew them in. You could you could probably do a story about like a storyboard artist, and then I don't know. Yeah, that would be fun. Storyboard artist at Disney have your little synergy right there, <sighs> but then it all takes place within like Coming you know the confines of his. The, re- <laughs> the reality is any. If they ever did make another Fantasia, it would premiere on Disney Plus anyway, so. Probably. Um, 
Yeah. So I wonder what classical music pieces they'll use in uh in fan in fan. Well, Asia in twenty forty nine, I mean, what will be considered a classic? Uh, Toxic by Britney Spears. I mean, it already <laughs> is. What are you talking be about? Epic. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be epic. I'd see that. There'll be a toxic uh a toxic segment. Why not? That's just a cough ski. <laughs> um oh, no. But yeah. I liked it. Everyone here likes it. This is a great movie. Uh yeah. So, did you like what you heard here? And if you did, you could check us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh we have some stuff coming up. Uh, on the fantasy fair we have mulan we are going to have a do a big mulan extravaganza we're going to review uh the documentary the boys and we're also going to review a documentary on uh on waking sleeping beauty and also the new uh the newly released howard documentary so we're going to do that also we have some plans for halloween so uh keep your ears and eyes peeled for that uh so yeah and also check out anything that the red spotlight entertainment thing is uh, doing we're going to be doing a Korra series pretty soon and all that good that shit. one i'm so, excited about it may get pretty explosive from what i'm hearing the the range it, of emotion it might, <laughs> yeah it might be a repeat of the of the beauty and the beast episode that we did so um yeah so, without further ado, I'm your host, Kyle Lira, and as always, stay magical, everyone.